so. Good man, Frank Sinatra. He knew what life was about. I'm just saying. <laughs> yes, he did. And a little dictionary action for those that didn't know. Recording in progress. Hello. Feedback. You're going to have to. You're going to have to. Go. We're going to talk about that tonight. <laughs> All righty. Did you get it, Susan? Susan? No, somebody it's, needs to mute. All echoing. You got to mute the mic mute on, the one mic on one of them. We'll have to get oh, out oh, on the computer because it's, it's nothing happens on the computer. Well, this is a perfect start. It is a perfect start. Okay. Oh, boy. I think we're good now. Okay. So, <laughs> welcome to tonight's Cocktails and Calling Me, <laughs> which will be an audio extravaganza. <laughs> oh, and here's what we're going to cover tonight. Just a brief overview, and I'm going to drop a message in chat for Susan. And, and if and if at any point anybody can guess the theme that went into the presentation, shout it out. Mm. Is now too soon? <laughs> nope, go no, for it. Go. Those like movies. Yes, ma'am. A lot of movies. Yeah. yeah. It's more about pop culture, though. But yes. Movies. Uh, it's the button. I Come don't on. think she knew where the button is. <laughs> I've given bottom her all left. she's got, Captain. Bottom left. There we go. There's got to be some Trekkies out there with me. Oh, yeah. All righty. So let's get this thing rolling, shall we? Uh, so first of all, let's let's do a little bit of science. I know you probably forgot most of this from school. Those of you that got it in school. I don't know if you folks in Tennessee got it, but... <laughs> Oh, ouch. <laughs> oh, sorry. Ouch. All right. So let's let's just hopefully do a, a hopefully quick little primer on science and the the, the sound the sound and the science of sound. So uh, we'll talk about how it works, how it works for us humans, how it works for the computers, how the ASR sees audio. Uh, don't fall asleep. That's all I ask. You can do that when Lisa talks. Again. <laughs> All right, so real basically, sound works through vibration, which causes waves in the air that vibrate something else. Let's look at specific examples. For humans, our vocal cords vibrate. We create sound waves that way. Those waves vibrate our eardrums, which move the ossicles, which vibrate the nerves and create signals in our brain that tell us there's a sound. It's similar in a computer. A computer uses electricity to move a coil that moves a cone that creates sound waves, vibrations. And those same vibrations can then move the diaphragm in a microphone and create signals that we can use to record those uh, sounds. We store those in audio files. It's just data like anything else that tells the computer how to vibrate the speaker or the diaphragm in your earphones or whatever else it's going to do with it. But at the end of the day, no matter how many formats they are, that, that there are, and there are plenty, um, they're just instructions that tell a computer how to create the sound. And that brings us to the ASR. The ASR is not like us. It doesn't hear anything. It's better to think of the ASR as looking. It looks at the audio. It sees the wave patterns. And based on the way it was trained, it figures out what was said. So at the top here, we have a thousand kilohertz tone, or sorry, a one kilohertz or thousand hertz tone. It's the little boo that you hear when uh, people uh, censor audio on TV or movies or uh, parental advisory music. Nice, clean up and down waves. And then in the middle there, we have a couple different people saying the word voice script. Very different looking, but they're all waves. 
But the thing about waves is they can do damage. Uh, you may be at a concert, and even though the music's so loud, you can hear it really well no matter where you're at. It's going to be so loud that it's distorted even to your ear. And if it's too loud, it can break your ear. And the same thing can happen to audio signals. Um, if you think about the way a microphone's constructed, it's just a little diaphragm that moves back and forth with vibrations in the air. And it only has a certain amount of way to travel. And if the sound is too loud because you're too close to the mic, that diaphragm doesn't have anywhere else to go. And so it can't produce more of a signal. And so you're going to get a flat line, which we're going to see in a second here. And we call that clipping. So on the top, a nice recording of the word voice. Nice, smooth waves and peaks. Valleys. But on the bottom, the gain was way too high. The speaker is way too close. And you can see the top of the waves were chopped off. They're square. They are clipped. This is bad audio. Just like a really bad storm. Really bad audio has very negative effects on ASR. It's trained on patterns it can recognize, and if the patterns get out of the recognizable, the results are unpredictable. And sometimes the results are it just can't recognize what you're feeding it. Too much, not enough. Any questions? Because that's the end of my little section. I got I got a comment question. Yes, ma'am. Today I used Audacity to do noise reduction. Mm -hmm. Does the audio file hold the peaks and valleys, but only the output and input can't reach the tops? So like if I noise reduce in Audacity, will the peaks come back? The peaks will not come back. It's just like a picture that was taken at too low resolution. You can't add data. That data is gone. And that's why when we do this, there's nothing we can do to fix it. I can't put those peaks back in because I don't know what they are. It's missing information. Gotcha. So if it was recorded too low, we can amplify it easily because the, the picture we see at the top there, it would just be much, much smaller. So we could tell the computer, hey, grow that out, make it a little bit bigger. But we can't fill in missing pieces. And what you're seeing at the top is that those tops are missing. Those bottoms are missing where we got the square lines. So we'll never know what that data was. We can't get it back. Yeah. Which so it, causes the distortion in what we hear. And so... It's very important that we start thinking about the things that Lisa is going to get into next. <clears throat> but um, my question is, like when I'm using AS Pro, I don't see that those lines. So no, nope. really but we're going to talk. We're going to talk about what you do see, Katie. I think Lisa's okay. going to get to your get to your concern in a moment here. All right. Okay. All right. So, so we're going to approach this from two sides tonight. And I'm going to approach it from the capture side and what we have control over, what is dangerous, what is good. And then Michael later is going to approach it from what we can do um, to help improve the ASR. What can we, what we can do to audio files um, to help get better output. So there, there are best practices to capturing audio, especially for better results with the ASR. And Michael hit upon it. Uh, the ASR sees the wave files. We hear them. And, and through practice and understanding what we're hearing, we can actually control what the ASR is going to see in those files. So next one. So this is a really common thing that we hear. Uh, in audio files that we're helping clients with. It's actually the, the test file that I train people on. I made the same mistake myself. On a remote proceeding, if the reporter does not mute their mic and other people are speaking, this is what the audio picks up. And Mr. McGrew, can you uh, spell your last name for me for the record? McGrew, M-C-G-R-E-W. And this should be an example of capturing an echo because the reporter did not mute their mic. And so incidentally, Susan helped us demonstrate that earlier as well. <laughs> yes, she did. 
So, so what ends up happening is the, the sound is coming out of my speaker on a remote proceeding and my mic is picking up sound. But the, we, Reporter Studio Pro, is capturing the sound from inside the computer before it comes out the speaker. So there's going to be a second, a half a second of a delay from it capturing it in the computer on one channel and then picking it up again from the mic on another channel. And your recording ends up with an echo. And although I'm surprised sometimes at how well the ASR does with it, I just can imagine how much better it would do if it didn't have the echo. So it's just a you know, simple thing. And we tell everybody, if you're in a remote proceeding, put a sticky note on your monitor. Remember to, re to mute that microphone because it makes a huge difference. And it's not just the echo either. There's a lot of times where we have uh, audio from clients that has uh, them rustling chip bags, rustling papers, typing keys, breathing on the mic, one time snoring. Mute your mic, please. It's the best. <laughs> For me, dog barking. <laughs> and of Ready? course, with the setup that we give you, sure. Yeah. The, the setup we give you, the mic mutes it to everything. So you're not disrupting the proceeding. But most importantly, you know, we're about the audio that's being captured. Um, this is probably the number one most common mistake that all reporters do improper gain adjustment. And more is not better when it comes to gain. So obviously we can't control the gain. I guess you can, some of the mics give you a gain control if you're doing a remote proceeding for your USB mic. But if you're in person and you're using a mixer and you have your mics placed out, um, everybody just thinks, well, I gotta make sure I capture those low speakers. So they crank the, the gain up which is cranking more energy to the mics, which is which are in essence causing the mics to go out and capture more audio. It's not necessarily just capturing it louder, but it's capturing more audio. So instead of just picking up the speaker, I'm picking up all the room noise around the speaker, the person speaking. And as well, we see the where the signal gets larger when you adjust the gain, and then you end up with the clipping that I showed earlier. And, we, don't, and, we don't hear it, but the computer doesn't know what to do once it reaches its max. Sure. We, you know, we're sitting there listening to it going, yeah, but I can make it out. I can make out what they're saying. But the ASR has a hard time with that. Ironically, the ASR does a better job with a whisper than, than it does with somebody over speaking or a mic that's been uh, overgained, right? It does a great job with a whisper. So here's an example of what it sounds like and what I'm talking about. If we could play the first one. This is a sample of an audio gain that is set too high. Notice even when someone's not speaking, you hear noise. This is exactly what the file I had to take the noise reduction to sounded like. They thought it was the air conditioning in the background, but it was just high gain. High gain. So here's a, here's an old trick. You know, we could talk about decibel levels. We can get into all the technical stuff. Your ear is the best judge. From for for thirty years, I've been telling people, close your eyes, listen to that mic when you're setting up, when you're making the adjustment, adjust the gain just to the point where you start hearing that shh, which means you're picking up air noise, and then back it off a quarter turn. A quarter turn? Wow. A quarter turn. Well, usually yeah. it's a dial. So like a quarter turn on the dial, yeah. right? Okay. Um, could be a little different depending on the mixer. Um, a lot of mixers don't even have dials anymore. But the point being, back it off. Just till you start hearing the shh, which is air noise, and then back it out. Because we want to get the vocals. We don't want to get the air noise. Okay. I am so confused because I have no controls like, where are you getting me? I know this is sound stupid, but like my AS Pro, that, well, what right. are you? I, I'm mostly live. Yep. Okay. So I don't have something where I can control that I know of that mm -hmm. I can control the volume. 
what we'll get, are you? We'll get to that too. Well, but, but I'd like to know that, I'd like to know what are what are you using for mics? How are you feeding the audio to Reporter Studio Pro? Okay, I have those uh, Martell electronic expensive round ones that I told you about, and you told me to get the adapter, so I got the adapter cord to make it longer, and that's I, I plug those directly into my AS Pro. So um, get with me because I can guarantee you we can adjust the gain on that. Um, is it worth me showing the sound settings, Mike? Uh, it wouldn't hurt. Okay. I think, it is, yeah. I, I think right. it's worth it. Okay. Yeah. So I tell you what, I'll do a quick screen share. So even if you don't have a mixer that's got um, uh, gain controls on it, Oh, look at that. Cocktails and Colloquy tonight. If you go to your sound settings, and of course, it's on my other screen. Can everybody see this okay? Yes, ma'am. Affirmative. So I can even do this for my Yeti microphone. Yeah. So we'll use that as an example. And I go to the device properties and look here. I have a gain control for it. Okay, so you can also do that in the app properties, right? That's that's not volume, that's gain. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Did I teach Amanda Rick or something? You did. Because yes. that says volume, right? There. I always I look for the most complicated <laughs> way to do things too, Amanda. It's 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 do you fun. know what? Do you know why they it says volume there? Because nobody would understand, understand gain. gain. That makes so, so much sense. So using your volume at the bottom, because sometimes I'll do that, like right now, I, I click on my little speaker at the bottom of my computer. So that that's the actual that's speaker. speaker volume. You'd have to. Oh, I got you. That's my over. headphones when I'm listening. So if, if, you, if you go into the app volume down at the bottom, is that the same thing as the gain? Or is that only on the devices? Okay, where are you seeing so app volume? Scroll down on the sound side. Advanced options, app volume, and device preferences. Oh. So that'll be actual volume preferences. Th that's actual volume inside yes. the apps, right? Yeah, okay. so I can control, say, the volume for Zoom. If I had Google Chrome open right now and YouTube, I could control um, not only the volume for it, but I could control the device that I want to play it out through. Yeah. We have to do that with all of our stuff. So the other one is hardware that and hardware so, is gain and software is volume. Yes. So it, it, when we're setting up or I'm setting up, I should look at this. Like when I'm doing my test, you yes, know, before it starts, I should look at this, do my test, and that'll tell me where my gain needs to be. Well, so right. you would do you would do both, Katie. You would open Reporter Studio and get everything set up. So you got your meters, and Lisa's going to talk about meters in a minute here. But you want that visual on how how hot the audio is coming in and then have this screen up so that if you need to adjust, you could turn the mic down a little bit or turn it up a little bit to get it to the right place. So everybody's recording everything tonight. <laughs> Here we go. So I'm opening up Reporter Studio Pro and I'm set up to do a remote, but it's the same concept, right? right. I'm using this microphone. Well, wait a minute. Is it hiding behind? That's what I'm looking for. Nope. Nope. She's only got the one icon. But you can force it open by right. You okay. would. No, have that the, was the player. You would have the problem tonight, wouldn't you? So <laughs> we're this not happened, even. Gonna, this happened gonna, earlier today and she couldn't recreate it after. But now that we're not trying, she can recreate the problem. But you have it recorded. So now you're you have a good recording of it. <laughs> oh. Oh boy. I'll make that just a little different. See if oh, so hey, you got the ghost. That's what this James Reedy gets. This is that fun. Happens to me sometimes. <laughs> you have you have a ghost machine in the background. Oh boy. Yep, I do. And oh, did you? Wow, that's new. Yeah, I've oh, been doing. I uh, I've been doing. I have been doing a lot of testing and experimenting on this laptop, people. So don't judge. I'm going to try one more time. 
Do you literally have no space, like hard drive? No. Uh, that would be RAM. That would be a RAM issue. Okay. I, I have so many people at work that have the okay the actual. So like, would you mind like me to do it? The screen. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna forget we're gonna forget that. Just open up your reporter studio pro, do your recording, do your little playback and listen to it. If it's too hot, that's what we call it. Hot, right? Too loud, too hot. Then go in here and we'll go through these steps again. Go to uh sound, type in sound to go to your sound settings. Scroll down to your input, go to that microphone device properties and just adjust so here do you guys hear the difference on my mic me speaking yes. right now oh yeah oh yeah drastically you have control over it miss katie good deal okay and inside right. inside it we have like each channel has its own up and down right there's a little triangle that we can move down for the playback okay yeah so that's for the playback not for not for the input all right, back to the show. All right, we can continue. So that all being said, we now have an example of what it should sound like if the gain is adjusted properly. This is a sample of audio gain that is properly set. My vocals are coming in nice and clear. I'm not hearing background noise. The signal's not overdriving. And I'm listening to this at about 50% volume through my headset. So that's the other key. When you're doing your confidence monitoring, your volume on your, your speaker or your headset or both should be set at about 50% because then that's going to give the back end wiggle room either way, right? You could go up with the volume or down with the volume. If you're having to turn your volume for your headphones or your speaker all the way up, your gain's too low, right? But if you heard in that, that uh, and that was, those were recorded with the same microphone, by the way. And I just, and it's just this Yeti mic and I cranked the gain up on it to do the first recording and I put it down where it should be for the second recording. But what you didn't hear in that second recording was this, Shh. which, was not my air conditioner running. That was actually just air noise. And and Katie, if you want to work on that, just let me know. We'll get on a remote with each other and work on it. Okay. Okay. I think I, I think I got it. Plus I made a note. Okay, good. Plus you'll have the recording. Yeah. You know how I'm about my notes. <laughs> I do know how you are. <laughs> uh all right, Michael, next one, please. Um, so, uh, most recording or capture devices have some type of visual meters that we're looking at. Reporter Studio Pro, for example, has the little meters that go up and down with the audio. It's a visual representation of what you're hearing. So I want you to think about those meters like a traffic light. You've got green, you've got yellow, you've got red. Green is good, yellow is caution, red is bad, stop. You're gonna have a problem. And if we could play that quick clip. So I want you to think of your audio meters just like a traffic light, green, yellow, red. When we have the audio bouncing in the green, we're good to go. If we turn the gain up and we start bouncing in the yellow, it's caution, back off, and if we turn the gain all the way up and we're and we're peaking in the red, then we've overdriven the signal. Stop, turn that gain down so that you're bouncing nice and neat right in the green again. So again, same mic. And, and um, I was able to do that because my actual mic has a gain control on it because it's for doing voiceovers. Same mic, and that was just me adjusting the gain. And when it got up into the red, visually we could see the danger zone, right? Did you hear how it distorted my voice? Made it all crackly? Now think what that does for the ASR. And up we with what we saw it. at the beginning where we have clipping and we have loss of information. And without information, the ASR is kind of like just guessing. Yep. 
And technically, technically, everybody would agree with me. You could still hear it. You could understand what I was saying. But look at all the artifacts that were introduced to it. And looking at the waveform, what was missing from it. So traffic light. Green is good. <laughs> okay, next one. Uh, this is a pretty easy one. Um, typically, when we're setting out mics, we're putting out a mic per speaker. Katie, I think you kind of throw them out in the middle of the conference room table. Um, mic placement. Um, standard rule of thumb, about an arm's length out from the chair, if you can. And, and the reason for that is so that we can properly adjust the gain. We don't want them as they're leaning forward because attorneys will lean back in their chair, they're gonna lean forward in the on the table like this, and you wanna give them ample room to make those adjustments. You also wanna give them room for their papers, right? And then again, you know, just by your ear, um, adjust that gain and you'll you'll be turning the gain up enough just to just to pick them up, you know, so that if they lean back, you're still picking them up good and strong. And again, we're <laughs> I'm sorry, but again, we're adjusting the gain through that sound settings for you device properties. For you, yes. So okay. for for most people who use Reporter Studio Pro, they are using a device. Oh, something like this. Well, that's what I use. You use the nimble? Yeah. And I just plug my my things in my microphones into that. Oh, Girl, well, the, the nimble has a game, you game out. software. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I use that. Oh. <laughs> okay. Hun. Okay. Forget what you just told me then. <laughs> yeah, forget what I just told you. I thought you were plugging. Okay. So the Nimble happens to come with really fancy software on your computer that allows you to adjust the gain. Or channel. Uh, ah. <laughs> for Never those of, for those watching the video, not present at this moment, um, your situation may not give you any kind of control. So your control may only be scooting the mic back to avoid overexposure. So, so we are going to do this because I adore Miss Katie. I was about to say, but if you have a nimble, then of course keep this in mind. Well, if you have there, a right? mixer, if you have a mixer, here's another type of a mixer right here. I, I've been qualifying this one. That's an, a new one that got um, introduced to me a few days ago. So, you know, I had to go out and buy one to test it. Um, Michael, I'm going to share my screen again to show Miss mm -hmm. Katie. Yep. Yep. Cool. I hope I hope nobody minds me taking a minute to do this. I've just plugged my mixer, my nimble in. I've got a power light. Yes. Let me type in nimble here. Oh, look at this nimble configuration tool. When I open this up, it's going to identify my nimble and each channel and microphone plugged into it. And these are the gain controls. And although there's not the green, yellow, and red, that line. Towards yeah, the they've got different part. colors. But really, um, this line right here, you don't want the signal to steadily be over the center line. But again, by ear, as you're listening to it, and you can do this while you're recording, Miss Katie. And look at, look at, I've adjusted the gain all the way down. I only have one mic plugged in, and I can turn it all the way up. Okay, so like today I was in court and I had three microphones and there was one that where I wasn't getting much sound from. You're telling me right here I could go to Nimble Configuration and turn it up. Yes, ma'am. Okay, gotcha. Play with it a little bit. And if you need to do a remote, if you want to do a Zoom meeting and us go over it, I'm happy to do it. Okay. Okay, it's yours again, Michael. I had to, I just couldn't leave the moment. No, it's fine. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, and, I mean, this is also for folks that are watching later. So the more bases we cover, the better. All right. So yeah, consider yeah. mic placement. And one thing I have noticed, um, I don't know if it's just a church thing. I grew I grew up in, in the church, not anymore, but I did. And in the church, at least you're taught to put your face right on the microphone and get up in there for singing. And um, that doesn't work so well for speech. It might oh. work to some degree for singing 
especially if you got a good person working the board that knows how to turn your gain way the hell down because you're too close. Yeah. But for what we do here in, in this arena, it's it's a little too much. So as, if you have control over it, get the mic away from their face. Yeah, we don't want to eat the mic. So um, I couldn't even begin to tell you how many emails and calls we get in support that say, oh my God, I don't know what happened. I'm missing audio. And the first thing we ask them is, were you confidence monitoring? And of course they say, well, of course I was. Well, then you would have known instantly that something happened and you were not capturing audio anymore. AAERT established best practices for digital court reporting back when it was electronic court reporting. 30 years ago, when we were using the Sony BM242s, I think is what they were, they were double bank uh, multi-track tape recording systems. Even back then, we had a way to plug in a set of headphones to monitor, and it had a second head that while it was recording, one went behind it and it was playing back. So your confidence monitoring is listening to something after it's been recorded. That way, you know, if the sound is gone, you've got a problem. I preach this. I preach this from every mountaintop, every course, every lecture that I give. It is so important to do that confidence monitoring. You get one shot at live. So do it, do it, do it. I'm done preaching. You mentioned church. I had to preach. All right. I forget who's going first, but we're going to look at what's behind door number one. Lisa, or is it you or me? <laughs> I'm looking. <laughs> I've lost track. I did, I did not bring that document up. <laughs> uh, it is you. All right. Play, so gonna, play it again, Sam. We're going to cover a laundry list of things that you're going to want to check on your audio before you click that submit button. First thing is play it. Please play it. Even if it's just 30 seconds, play your audio. You'll find a lot of the things we're about to mention in this section if you just listen to your audio. And, and just call it a quick audit. Just skip through it. Listen to the beginning. Listen to the middle. Listen to the end. You've got audio. Yay. Sounds good. <laughs> Lisa? Oh, this one is me. Oh, ensure you have audio in your file. Um, so no lie, guys, we have gotten trouble tickets um, asking for help. I didn't get my transcript. It's a blank page. <laughs> and we do what we do. And we look at the audio file that they uploaded and it's blank. Three or four or six hours of blank. Blank. No <laughs> audio in it. Sorry, guys. The ASR is really good and it's really good at picking up a whisper. It cannot transcribe something that's not there. So another good reason, do a quick audit of that file before you upload it. That way you kind of know what to anticipate and expect when you're getting your, your rough draft transcript back and you're not caught by surprise. And remember, just because you can turn the volume up on your computer or turn it down in most cases, doesn't mean that the ASR can. The ASR gets the signal it gets. So. If it gets silenced, it gets nothing. And if it gets too much, it gets overwhelmed. All right. So there are so many formats. We take a lot. Some are, I would say, superior to others. Uh, I will tell you that before anything happens with your audio for ASR, it gets converted to a WAV file. The reason for that is that a WAV file is the most accurate representation of sound as far as audio formats go. It's also very big because it has a lot of information. So it may not always be optimal for you to upload. Um, but that is what we do end up using because it gives the most accurate representation. Uh, there are some formats that can cause problems. Uh, for example, although we accept TRM files from For the Record, some of them are multi-channel, and depending on how the reporter set things up, one of those channels might be an echo of another or 
create an echo of another. So if you listen to your audio and you're doing you're doing your you're submitting your audio from for the record, make sure you turn all the channels on so you see you hear what the computer is going to see. The computer is not going to turn off channels like you can. So if the the complete picture that you listen to when you listen to all of the tracks together is not good, then you're probably going to want to do some work before you submit it to the ASR. So yeah. I will say that Michael and I have each taken calls where the, the client on the other end said, yeah, but if I mute channel two, I hear everything just fine. Well, the ASR can't mute channel two. You, you gave it everything. And so it yeah. takes everything. Um, Liberty court player, DCR files. Yes, you can export files from Liberty that we can use. However, you need to follow a few steps. We have an article on the support page to tell you how to do it the right way. Because if you don't do it that way, Liberty adds some extra information um, that makes them non-standard. So even though they say WAVE, even though they say MP3, they have extra stuff. Easiest way to tell is to play those files in Windows Media Player. If they play, they're good. If they don't play, you did something wrong. And clients get confused because they play it in Liberty Player or they throw it in Express Scribe and it plays just fine. What's the problem? Well, those programs are written to handle those extra pieces of information that were put in the files. Our software is not. So please make sure that you export things properly from Liberty files before you upload them. And then video files don't necessarily cause a problem, but they are very large. And large has its own set of issues we'll talk about. And additionally, I mean, this is your time. This is your money. You're spending a lot of time that you don't need to spend when it comes to video files. So if anything, I would suggest, if you can, uh, convert to audio only before you submit. If nothing else, just to save yourself a little bit of time. And, and, that to you. and that leads to me. And I am going to show you how easy <clears throat> it is to convert um, a, a video file to an audio only file. Um, what is it that you said earlier? Um, big Ryan, rhymes with big rhymes with gig and gigs a little with gig. gigs a little bit too small. If your audio file is a gig or bigger, you can probably make it smaller and still get the exact same results. All right, so I am going to share my screen. Sorry, we keep bouncing back and forth. Uh, it's the only way we can keep it on Zoom, guys, and keep it casual. So Audacity, you hear us refer to it a lot. It is a free program to download and to use. No hidden side effects. There are no hidden, you got to purchase this. Oh, we're only going to let you do a few things. It's a completely free program. So I'm going to take what is an MP4 file. So it's a video file. I am going to click and drag this file. You see the little video thumbnail there, and I'm going to drop it in Audacity. Uh, this is a fairly large file. This is about a gigabyte, to almost. And it's going to open the file. Now, Audacity is not a video player, so it is actually pulling out the audio, and the only thing it's going to show me is the audio from that video file. I simply go to, I don't have to do anything else. I go to File, Export, and I'll export it either as an MP3 or a WAV. I, because I have really crappy internet, I always export as an MP3 because it's still got great sound, but it removes a lot of artifacts, so it's a smaller file. I'm going to leave this, uh, let's put it in my downloads folder, which I already have one there. Let's get rid of that one or it won't work. Save. I just click OK here. I don't need to put any of that information in it. And it exports it out as an MP3. It is that simple to convert a video file to an audio file. And now instead of having a gigabyte file, I'm going to have something that's going to be mere megabytes to upload. And because the could, ASR doesn't need the video. And which can end up meaning the difference between waiting, say, what was it today, Amanda, 20, 30 minutes for that file to upload versus five, Christ. three minutes. 
So and that was one of our smaller ones. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It makes a difference. The, the the little bit of time it took me here in Audacity is saving a ton of time on the upload and it having the video files not buying me anything on think, the rough draft transcript. I think we just spent two minutes doing that and you definitely saved at least 15 based on that file size. So Lisa said that because of her internet, she chooses MP3 over Wave. Mm -hmm. Why? Smaller. I, <laughs> it's smaller. Okay. So, but quite a bit smaller. Um, it, it's smaller because it uses an algorithm to compress. It's a compressed file, sort of like a zip file. Because it's compressed, you lose a little bit of fidelity. But in my experience, at least as long as I've been doing this with the company, we get the same results. I see maybe a one or two word difference between a wave and an MP3. Gotcha. Because at the end, it gets converted to a wave before it gets converted back to a wave before it gets run to the ASR, every file. Oh, Ma Mandy's taking notes. <laughs> All right. So if it's a gig, might be too big, y'all. I love uh, that. Easy to remember. All right. Oh, we just did that. Hello. Oh, sorry. That's okay. I forgot to even put those in there. All right. One may be the loneliest number, folks, but it's awesome for ASR. Trust me. I I think it was even with Amanda this week that there was a file where it was a stereo file, what we call false stereo, because both channels were exact copies of the, the other. Um, so not like, you know, your favorite music where you hear something different on the left from the right. Nope. It was exactly the same which meant that that file was twice as big as it needed to be to get the same information. And oddly enough, once I reduced that file to mono, it got better results than the false stereo. So if you have the time and if you have the inclination to do a little bit of work, please, please, please reduce your files to mono. Not only will it save you time and space, in some cases we've actually seen it give better results. And so I will show you real quick how easy that is to do. I'm also using Gilvy Scholler, but I'm just <laughs> using a wave file. It's one of our mocks that we because created. We that are we are using recorded. training files that belong exclusively to us, and we will not. Want, we do not <laughs> want to violate anybody's confidentiality <laughs> or or trust. No. Well, we did this earlier today on a live file and did the mixed stereo. The mm. So what were the other two? Um, all, we, all we need to do is drop the file in, yeah. just like Lisa did. Sweet. On this blank space on the left, you just right-click, split stereo to mono. Of course, you want to make sure that they are actually identical copies of each other. If they're not, then you want to mix down. That's a whole different story, a little more advanced, and we can talk about that another day. But for simple stuff, split it to mono, remove one, and then export it out like Lisa just did. It's that easy. It's that fast. And the resulting file is half the size. It's got exactly the same information. It'll get e either the same or sometimes, I don't know why, but sometimes better results. Ooh, the day after tomorrow. Um, I, what seems obvious to us just isn't obvious to everyone. And and I'm going to tell you some of these things we've actually pulled from from support tickets that have come in. Um, uh, we've had people take files from multiple days because it was the same case. And it was three days worth of files and they uploaded all three days worth of files. In one job. And for one job. The system first cannot handle that. It cannot handle that because the 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 difference in the file naming is going to keep it from being able to concatenate or join them together properly. And if it can, it's going to be a horrendous output because your mic placement might not have been the same on day two as it was on day three. So it's going to completely mess up your diarization. Um, no need to do that. Separate days, separate jobs. It's not going to cost any more or any less. It's the same amount of time. Enough said. Yeah. Keep, Plus, keep it made a really big file. It was a it was several gigabytes worth of 
Yeah, those, those, are, the, those are the two largest issues. If, it, and if you then, submit and multiple you... days, you can exceed. Our, we've seen the system do just fine with up to around eight hours, which is what you'd expect from a, a day's workload. When you go past that, it kind of trips up, not only because of the file size that results, but also because you have all different audio profiles mixed together. So it can't quite figure out what's what in all that jumble. Um, I was going to ask something. I think I might have forgot it. Um, I'm sorry, Katie. No, that's okay. Oh, it was important to me. Oh, well, how do you, if you do that, let's say today, for instance, I did a hearing in, amongst my other hearing, and I want to put the mornings, I want to go ahead and upload the morning's work to y'all, auto script, and then I want to do the afternoon in another file. How do I combine those two? Just cut and paste? Did, so, does that make sense? Was Yes. Was it all the same case? You just had a morning and afternoon session? Yeah. And then in the middle of that, I had a different, whole different case. Yeah. Okay. So you would not want to include that different case. Right. So you want just the morning and the afternoon sessions. If you can actually upload those two separate files, and I think, Michael, don't you talk about that a little bit? Maybe not. No, but, but we covered it in our last uh, email, uh, last video. I mean, multiple files at once are fine as long as they're from the same event. The same and you event. have them I'm in saying, the right order. Yep. Yeah, I'm just saying like that. Let's say at lunch, I've got a two hour lunch. I'm going to take that morning session and I'm going to upload it. And then it's, I'm going to get it back from AS script. And so then do it in the then, afternoon in the second job. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's, uh -oh. it's, I Should wouldn't. I not do that? I wouldn't. I, I would recommend keeping them together unless you need them separate. Because then you're going to have to go through all the trouble of putting them back together. I know, but isn't that the same scenario if you're talking about you're in court for three days? No, no. no. Because... So some folks take their files from three days, three days worth of files. They upload them at once in one job and this massive 12 hour upload of files and then hope that they're going to get a transcript out of that. And it's never going to happen. It fails every time. All right. Yeah. So stick to one day at a time per job. Maybe that yeah. would have been a better title. One day at a time. That was a oh, great I show. I love that show. <laughs> All right. And I think this is the last one in the laundry list. Um, and this is rare. Most of you will probably never, ever encounter this, but it does happen. Every once in a while, because if you're using software and you're using multi-channel, your software is going to export things for you in a nice, neat package, whether it's one file or whether it's four files or six or whatever. They're all going to be the same length. They're all going to start at the right time and end at the same time. However, if you are in the rare case where you had to rely on your backups, which were, say, three or four physical recorders you placed throughout the proceedings, that's different. You are a person, not a computer. There's no way you started and stopped those recorders at the exact same time. And so if you want to submit those using the mix down feature, which combines them all into one track, you're going to have to do a little bit of editing to make sure they stop, start and stop at the same time. We have had users submit files that were varying in length, did not start and stop at the same time. So when the ASR mixed them down, it was just a garbled mess. And obviously it couldn't find any words in it because even a human couldn't find any words in the result. So in the rare case, you have to use mix down with files that weren't automatically matched for you. Do a little bit of work to match them up. And if you need some help, reach out. We'll help you out. Okay. So we talked about all the whatnots, what to check for. What do you do when you do have a problem? You've done your best, but, and maybe things weren't even in your, in your control, but you still have some things you need to deal with. Well, don't just throw up your hands and go, well, I'll click submit anyways. If you know there's a problem, try to do something about it. And the first step is you got to have the audacity to do something <laughs> about it. And I do mean the audacity. <laughs> And by the way, you should also have FFM pegs. Let's talk about those real quick. All right. As Lisa already, uh, we both already mentioned, Audacity is free. It's open source. It is very safe. It's trusted all throughout all communities, honestly. 
uh, even used by a lot of professionals for professional projects. Definitely safe. We use it daily. Um, and then the thing that's going to go along with it that allowed Lisa to do what she did with the video file is what's called FFmpeg. Uh, because of patent restrictions, Audacity can't package it together with their software, but it's very easy to add. Uh, it's just another one click, one or two click installer. And then after that, you can just drag and drop like you're used to. There is another version of FFmpeg that's a little more complicated. We won't get into that tonight. It's a little too much. It's too much for me. <laughs> There's a so, drag and drop where I don't have to type into the command line? Not for the things I've shown you to do. That's the okay. 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 You too take that offline. <laughs> so <laughs> let's take a look at their websites real quick. Um, for Audacity, it's pretty easy. They got a nice big download button on their main page. If you have a different system than Windows, they have they have you covered. You'll pick the version you want, download it, install it. Works just like any other software. Uh, the other link takes you to their help page, which gives you directions on how to install FFmpeg for Audacity. Once again, just another file that you download, double click, run it. Kind of like our software, they have the unknown publisher warning you have to click through. Uh, and then once it's done, all you have to do is open Audacity and everything just works, just like Lisa did earlier with the video files. Unlike my Reporter Studio Pro today. <laughs> If you look, if you only knew the time that we were messing on my computer doing all kinds of stuff today, I oh, would have been surprised if it would have opened. <laughs> oh, this morning was a mess. All right. So we installed it. What's the important thing here, folks? It's to cut things out. That's usually what we're going to do with Audacity. Um, and there's a lot of things we want to get rid of because why? One, you don't want to spend money on things that give you nothing. Why, even if we could transcribe 10 minutes of silence, why would you pay us the money you pay us for 10 minutes of nothing? So get rid of long silence. Even if you were willing to pay, those long periods of silence can mess up the ASR because it's trying to find something there to transcribe and your job may error out or give you some really crazy results in your transcript. Best to just get rid of it. Off the record chatter, why do you want to pay for it? The client's not going to pay for it in your pages. Get rid of it. So. And it's hard for the ASR. And I've seen the difference. I've seen yes. drastic difference in the results where the reporter had started the recording. It's 10 minutes of chatter. You know, are you here? Can you hear me? Wait, let me let me change my to my headphones. All this unnecessary chatter. And then when it gets into it, it 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 just messes with the transcript output. It really does. So three keys that really matter to you when you're using Audacity. You don't have to be a rocket science to a rocket scientist to use this program, or a rocket surgeon or any of those things. Uh, space bar plays and stops. Only disadvantage there is that it'll go back to where you started. X will stop where you're at. So if you're trying to find a specific spot, you can click space, let it play until you find that right spot, hit X, it'll stop it there. And once you got it stopped or you want to split, control I puts a split in your audio. And let's see what that means in real time with this lovely mono file that we just made earlier. All right. So as you can see, I got a, Big old hunk of silence right here in the middle. They had a recess or something. I don't know. I don't care. Uh, let me demonstrate the buttons for you. I'm hitting space bar. Could you please give me a more complete address, please? And it plays. And let me zoom in so you can see where I started. And once I hit space bar again, it stops. But it's going to start again from that line where I clicked and selected. Address, now if I hit the X, now my selection starts there. If I wanted to, because I found the spot I like, find another spot, hold shift and click. And then I could delete that if I wanted to. But there's a little more precise way. And that's the that's the uh, control I make a split and then we'll just grab a section and get rid of it. So I got a silence here. I know I need to get rid of that. So I'm just going to put my cursor there. Control I. Now these are two different sections. I'm going to go to the end of the silence, control I, 
same thing. And I reason I teach you this method is because you can find the spots. You can listen to the beginning. Oh, 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 oh. here's, oh, there's the end of the chatter right there. I want to break it right there. So now I can get rid of the pre-chatter, just select it, delete. I can get rid of the silence, select it, delete. I'll slide these two together. I'll control A just like every other Windows program. And then I'll export it just like we did in the other sections. It really does not take a lot of time. It's going to save you money. It's going to save you hassle. It's going to give you a better transcript. Oh, God. And at the end of the day, for me, I could even handle spending a couple extra dollars, but it's my time, right? My time editing that transcript. And the goal is to get the best text output that you can. So everything that we've talked about tonight is to improve that that rough draft transcript output. And just like every other Windows program, Control Z. Let's go back a few steps. Uh, <laughs> I think I think I messed up. Let's let's restart. Um, it's my favorite button. I use. Amanda I use did talk about a noisy time. a noisy file today. So yep. in a noisy file, instead of this nice clean blank line you'd see, you'd see a much smaller buzzy looking line, but. It's just noise, right? Like if, if I was to throw the file that Lisa had in a sample or in, in here earlier, um, you'd see nice big peaks and valleys like this. But then you'd see a little line of just where the air noise was, right? So a more advanced feature, I could select a portion of that. We'll just pretend the noise is there. I could go to, where are you? Noise removal. And go to noise reduction. And I would click get noise profile because I had selected an example of what the noise is. And then I would select everything, control A, just like all of the Windows programs, go back to that noise removal, noise reduction, just go with the defaults, they're always fine, and click OK. And it would get rid of a pretty good, a good decent amount of that noise. A few simple so steps could make a huge difference. I'd like to make... Oh, I'm sorry. I'd like to make a point here. So if any of you and, and everybody's had it where they've uploaded an audio file and they've got they have received a rough draft transcript that is less than perfect. It's not what they've been used to receiving. And we get a, a call at the help desk. Right. So the things that we're doing are what we would be doing on the back end to try and fix your file. If you take a few seconds to do a quick audit of that file before you upload it and it's not something you're comfortable fixing yourself you can still reach out to us but you've saved yourself time and aggravation because we're going to help you up front instead of on the back end and then there's no no issues to begin with yep uh there's a lot more advanced things you could do with audacity Probably a little too much for a quick cocktails and colloquy, but we're glad to teach if you want to learn. If you don't want to learn and you need help, well, that kind of leads us into where we're heading next. You've done everything you can. You really have, but it's still going to hell. Well, you need you're more not the, power. <laughs> nobody's expecting you to be an audio engineer. You want to click and upload. We get it, but you've got bad audio. So... Let us be the doctor. Let us be the engineer. Let us be your lifeline. Reach out to us. So many times folks come to us after things are already broken, after they've got a double charge because they tried to rerun the same audio to, hoping for a different result. They didn't realize they were submitting silence and submitted the file twice and got double charged for nothing. If there's a problem, reach out to us. Even on the weekends, we're keeping our eyes open for you because we're here for you. So, and, and there are so many people that will upload audio to transcribe and it may be two weeks till they actually look at it because now they have to get that transcript out. Let's do it on the front end, not the back end. So you've got plenty of time, no stress. So obviously everybody at least in this session, has seen myself and Lisa. If you've never seen Colin, he's a really great person. Probably the nicest person you'll talk to today. That's not an exaggeration. I'll but agree with that. <laughs> this, is, this is the team. We are here for you. 
All right, we open the floor now. Any questions, comments, concerns? Did, did you fall asleep? Do we need to wake you up? <laughs> well, have, you know, I'm going to say something. Go ahead, Amanda. Mine is just like a teeny tiny question that has little to do with everything. The noise reduction, um, that's exactly what I did today. Uh, what are the deep why are the defaults the way they are is there a reason they need to be changed or anything like that like if we are doing a soft noise reduction compared to a larger one i would only recommend deviating from them if you're a qualified audio engineer which i am not okay. which i never deviate from them because i'm not me too if the, okay. if the defaults don't i might go for the defaults to a degree to the left or right just to see what happens but if the defaults don't work I generally accept that it's it's probably a little over my head. Right. And you can do it multiple times using the same sample. You, you can, can continue yeah, yeah. To, to. OK. All right. And once again, I mean, if you're if you do something like that, if you do something more than cut out the silence. Once again, go back to the beginning of all of this advice. Listen to your audio. Listen to what it did to it when you did those steps. Miss Katie. Okay, you, you may have addressed this already, but I've noticed that when I'm I'm listening, I'm doing the uh, control monitoring, whatever you called it. I do that all the time throughout the entire whatever I'm in. And um, I've noticed like I can hear it and it's great. And I'm thinking, oh, this is going to be so clear and great. But then when I get it home, when I get home and I pull up the audio, it's not so great. So I'm going to guess you do what I do with the confidence monitoring and you've got it turned down pretty low because you're listening to the conversation in the room, right? Right. And, and when you get home and you listen to it, you're turning the volume up. Yes. So, so typically what I do the first minute to three minutes of any proceeding, whether usually when I'm in person, I'm really focusing on those audio levels because I've set all the gain to my mics. The people come into the room, it changes the acoustics of the room just by filling the room up with people. And then, of course, people speak differently than I do. So that first one to three minutes, I'm listening, the volume's up in my earpiece, and I'm adjusting my gain. Now I've got it all where it sounds good. Now I'm turning that volume down to where it's background noise again. Does that make sense? Yeah, but you're turning the volume down in... On your headset. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So I turn it up, you know, because I really want to hear it so I can fine tune it. I can't fine tune it if I've got the volume on my headset turned down to 25%. So I'm going to turn it up to about 50%, make my adjustments, and then turn it back down again for the rest of the proceeding. Okay. But I'm a perfectionist when it comes to audio. And well, I mean, you should also be watching your meters, right? You have the meters. If If you've only got like one or two green bars, you're probably a little too low. If you start seeing yellow, you're probably too high. Well, I'm going to agree with Katie that it's those bars can look perfect and it will still come out and not and quite as crisp. I've right. always said the 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 meters on Reporter Studio Pro are not as accurate as listening to mm -hmm. it, right? The visual representation I don't think is quite the same. And well, I've, I've, I've always been told if you see any yellow, it's as good as red. So I always yep. try to, when I'm doing recording for posterity's sake, uh, I always try to make sure I never dip into the yellow. Well, and now that I know how to adjust the game, <laughs> maybe that's going to make a big difference. I think it will. I hope so. I do too. Uh, but and wait till you see the difference it makes on your rough draft transcript. Well, let me say this, and because I don't, I'm sure it's something I'm doing. I don't just don't know what, and I don't know how to fix it. Right in the middle, we well, we took our lunch break today, and when I went back, all of my confidence monitoring was great. But when we went back from lunch, I, I almost panicked in the middle of court because it was recording, and I could see my little bars moving. Um, but when I did this confidence monitoring, I couldn't hear anything. And I know it was recording that and that's happened like the last three times, but it still records and I cannot figure out what the deal is. There, there's a, a couple of things that can be going on there. Is your computer going to sleep? Did you close the lid? Um, you, you know, 
if you're walking away from your computer, here is always my suggestion. For security purposes, just close down Reporter Studio Pro. Just close it. You, you don't want anybody in there touching your laptop or messing with it. When a computer goes to sleep, it can also put ports on your laptop to sleep and they may not graciously wake back up. Or when they do, your output, your sound output setting may have changed. I've okay. seen it switch where it's trying to output instead of to my headphones, I go down to the speaker setting, the sound setting uh, in my, my system tray, and it says it's out to the nimble. So best practice, if you are leaving that computer, close Reporter Studio Pro because you can open it, start a new recording, select the recording and just continue that recording. So I would start a new recording or I would go open for recording. Michael, can you show open her since, for, open since for mine recording. is messing up? Okay. Yeah. I did that I today. I just was always scared because I was I was scared that it was going to overwrite something or I was no, going to miss no, no, something. No. That, I am, that I am a little feature. I am a okay. little curious and actually kind of a little worried, Katie. You said um you know it's still recording. Do you say that because you saw the meters? As, yeah, because I saw the meters, but okay, also the meters go whether you're recording or not. Okay, but that's great. <laughs> no, not the start great. Um, well, I know it was recording because this happened not long ago, and I listened to the file and everything okay. for that day. Oh, was that's, oh good. Oh, good. So, okay. okay. The thing that you guys sent out last week that told us how to um, stop the USB ports from going to sleep, will that help her with this too? Yeah, I've got to like, do that. Like for just step. walking away? It could. It could, but if if you you have your um, computer set to go to sleep after a certain amount of inactivity, it would still turn them off. It's okay. still gonna it, it's still gonna shut down the power to those USB ports. So that's why we always recommend if you are walking away from your computer because it's a long enough break. And I did it because I I I didn't do it in the beginning. I caught an attorney messing with my computer. I'm like, what did you do? I wanted to see what this was. That is my computer and that's the record. I take my role as guardian of the record very seriously. So yes. always close it down. So like I was saying, Katie, I got meters. I'm not recording yet though. So don't always take that as a sign of recording. Okay. All right. Don't always take that as a sign. Whoa. Okay. All right. Don't always, take, it, always take it that. It doesn't. As ah, as well. hang on, All hang right. on. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta change. My, ah, there we go. hang on, All hang right. on. <laughs> I, gotta, pause, I gotta change my pause. output. There we go. I echoed myself. Hit pause. Hit pause. Oh boy. How fun. All right, there we go. Oh boy. I got the recording right, in my ear. I don't have an echo. I got the recording in my ear. I don't have yeah, an echo on the We're still hearing the loop back. Oh, my mic's yeah, here. because my, yeah, my mic's not. You're oh, sharing sound too, aren't yeah. you? How about because, my, yeah. my mic's not? You're sharing sound too, aren't you? How about now? <laughs> Point of this was to show her how to resume a recording. So let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I got my crappy recording. I just did. <laughs> All right. I went away to lunch. I'm coming back. Oh boy. Beautiful picture. This has been a lovely night of faux pas. <laughs> you know why? It's because we haven't drank enough. <laughs> All right. So I'm, I'm going to select what I started earlier, and I'm going to open it for recording. You were right, Katie. And you you don't have to, but it's just, it's, we've seen it's so many habit, problems. I do it. Just to have it, even though it's it says it's selected, we found a few times that it isn't. So... Just go through the steps. Got my meters back. Everything looks good. There I go. So, so every time okay, a reporter so it opens up. it up, they're supposed to select the speaker and microphone again, just for security's sake. We, it's, I tell it's you why. It's just we not a bad idea. Okay. Windows is funny. If if the last time I used it or when I set it up, my my microphone was plugged into this USB port. Then the next time I go to use it, I plug it into a different USB port. Sometimes Windows says, yeah, um, I don't know how to connect you to it, right? 
So we just say it, it takes a second to just reselect them. Awesome. Best practices, you know. Yeah. Uh, okay. Any other questions, comments? Katie, I'm so glad you joined yeah. us tonight. <laughs> you know, I I'm always your trouble student. <laughs> <laughs> So do we have any other um, questions about topics covered tonight? Anything else related to audio? Anything we didn't cover that you wish we would? Something for future? I really liked this demonstration. It was great. Really Thank you. Good. Double check in chat just in case Ricky wants to chat and not speak. <laughs> I don't see anything. I, th I think we're good to call it tonight, Lisa. I think so too. Thank you for joining us and watch for the next one. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, Ricky. All right. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank Good you. night, everyone. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night, Mandy. <laughs>